Let's pray. Father, I pray that your spirit will be in our hearts and our minds and turn our thoughts to your thoughts and my words to your words. Amen. Kindness. Taking time to talk to someone who is homeless. Helping someone struggling with heavy bags. Buying a drink for someone who looks as though they're having a bad day. We've all done these things, or some myriad variations of them, and we've all had similar things done for us. We know that expressing kindness is good for us. It's good for the receiver. It makes the giver feel better. That's great. But if kindness is so simple, why do we not see more of it in the world? And why do we not always feel kind? The way we view the world often gets in the way. Over the years, I have been fortunate enough to work for organisations that have invested in me and sent me on courses to help me advance my career. One of these early courses stuck with me, and not in a good way. At the end of it, we had to give collective feedback on each other. The feedback that I received was that everyone was certain I could progress, but that if I wanted a senior position in the organisation, I would have to lose being kind. That caused a real shock to me at the time. But it does fit that people see kindness as a nice thing to do, but that the world isn't really going to run on it. And if we're honest, even though we know that kindness is good, we have that feeling that kindness has its limitations. After all, kind words to a grieving family can't bring back someone who has died. How can kindness stand up to the bullets and bombs of murderous regimes like Syria or Myanmar? And as nice as kindness is, it feels irrelevant in this harsh world. So to think about this, I want us to consider the passages we've just heard. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. It's a great passage, isn't it? What a story, told with real passion and energy. But all that doesn't hide the fact that it's the bleakest passage in the Bible until we get to Jesus' crucifixion. It's the point where everything goes wrong, where we take the trust God put in us and throw it back in his face, shift the blame onto each other and then have to take the punishment that such rebellion deserves. But towards the end of all this is a sentence that seems out of place, so much so that I've highlighted it. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. I've always found this verse a bit unusual. It probably says something about the way my mind works, but it always makes me think of God with a pair of knitting needles in his hand and a ball of wool at his side. Or God hunched over a sewing machine with his tongue stuck out as he tries to keep the stitching straight. That is ludicrous. But that's how this verse feels. By the time we get to it, we've learnt a few important things about God. We've learnt that he's the creator of everything. We've learnt that goodness is at his very core, so much so that everything he creates is good and he revels in it. We've also learnt that justice is central to his character. Our rebellion is serious and has to be met with appropriate judgment. But after all this, the next thing we see is God making clothes for the very people who've just disobeyed him and spoiled a good and perfect world with evil. Kindness is at the very heart of God's character. It's right up there with goodness and justice. So much for the idea of it being irrelevant. God reaches out to the man and the woman. He could have shrugged his shoulders and said, well, you're responsible for this, so you sort it out. But he doesn't. He sees beyond the consequences of what they have done. He sees that they're in need, that fig leaves really aren't going to be enough for the future. And he gives them just what they need at that point. God is able to be both just and kind. There is no shame or weakness in kindness. 
and it's why kindness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It is part of our character because it is part of God's character. We are made in his image, so being kind is one of our traits. It isn't just something we should do because it makes us feel good. It's something that springs from us as naturally as fruit appearing on a plant. It means that we respond to the world around us in the same way that God does. That said, it does involve hard work. Notice that the verse I'm looking at says God made the clothes. This was written in Hebrew, and since the language is so ancient, grabbing hold of exact meanings can be difficult. But scholars agree that there is a big difference between the use of the words create and make. Create means making something out of nothing. Make means using the materials that have been created to produce something. God could have done the former. He could have snapped his fingers and created clothes out of thin air. An easy task. After all, he had just created the universe. But he didn't. He chose instead to use the materials that he had created and make the clothes. Why? Because in that moment, he shows the man and the woman that he understands them, that he's with them, that he does care. The kindness we show should never be patronising or suggest that we are the good ones for doing someone a favour. God uses simple methods to show his kindness in action. Jesus uses the parable of the Good Samaritan to show us how hard the Samaritan works. He doesn't just dial 999 and wait for an ambulance to turn up. He's involved until the man has fully recovered. It involves time, money and thought. But there is nothing superhuman about his kindness. It will always be hard work. But it's also something that we can all do. And both passages are also clear as to who we show kindness to. That's simple. It's everyone. Not just those we like, not just those we know, not just those who move us to pity. In Genesis, Adam and Eve had just betrayed God's trust in them and were under the cloud of justice. But that had no impact on God's response to their need. We know that the shock of Jesus' parable is that the despised Samaritan helped the Jew. We, of course, are disgusted that the religious people the Levite and the priest don't help. But the first audience would not have felt that. They would have heard what Jesus said and thought, that's right, because the strict but accepted religious laws of remaining pure are so important that the religious men could not possibly be the ones to help the stranger. At that point, the story is going the way they expected it to go. It goes off the rails when Jesus uses the example of the Samaritan to show that kindness tears up all the rules. Kindness is not interested in what is socially acceptable. It doesn't worry about standing out from the crowd. We may often feel awkward about helping people because it cuts across all the unwritten rules we put in place about connecting with strangers or not making ourselves vulnerable or not getting too involved with people. Every act of kindness, no matter how small, breaks down barriers. And the final thing that these passages show us is just how important kindness is. Kindness is so important that it must be our default position to the world around us. It's important for us to get hold of this because it isn't obvious. If we go back to Genesis, making clothes still seems like a very small thing against everything else that has happened in this passage. It goes back to the view I shared at the start of this talk. Is kindness nice, but just irrelevant when it comes to the crunch? In the end, God still kicks Adam and Eve out of Eden. Justice still has to be done. But if we think like that, then we haven't grasped what God's act of kindness means. It isn't simply a sharp pang of concern for humanity. It's actually a very profound gesture. Adam and Eve feel naked and ashamed before God. 
The whole passage is, of course, a metaphor for the spiritual nakedness they feel. Having disobeyed God, they feel that they need to hide their thoughts from him. The clothes that God makes for them covers that shame. It's a promise that God will rescue them. These clothes are temporary, but a day will come when God will clothe them and us in righteousness and remove our shame and the things we've done wrong permanently and completely. That day came when Jesus went to the cross. The first act of kindness in Genesis is the first step to that. Likewise, our acts of kindness will always reflect that first step. The kindness that we show won't bring back someone from the dead, but can help a grieving relative to be able to face life. Our kindness may not bring down a murderous regime, but it can offer protection to individuals threatened by such regimes. Every time we carry out a simple act of kindness, we extend the kingdom of God and we obey Jesus' command to go and do likewise. Amen.